My dear friend Robert is here with me today and we're talking about different theological topics, historical topics. Robert is, has a PhD in history and teaches at and works at Florida International University, University Park Campus or Batike Park Campus now. My old stomping grounds where I was campus minister for uh, over five years and I grew to meet him and he's a very big part of my life. He's like the older brother I never have had and always uh, helps me uh, grow and challenges me in my own paradigms and a lot of people. It's a very deep, uh, caring individual. So I thought we would sit down and just shoot the breeze, talk about different things. Robert, um, what do you, you were telling me the other day we were talking about dialogue of the death. Right. And how that often pops up when you see arguments on social media. You don't want to engage in that nonsense. And I certainly- I try to avoid it as much as possible. It's, uh, it's, it's counterproductive. What do you Not mean? only that it's unproductive, at some point it's counterproductive because if what we're interested in is learning from each other, accumulating a basic set of uh, knowledge, then this doesn't lead to that. So it's right. not unproductive, it's counterproductive because it also then closes off the very lanes of dialogue that we want to engage, engage in. in and run through. And right. So, you know, it's it's to me it's... You know, an exercise in confirmation bias many times, you know, people just hear what they want to hear, selectively screen out what they disagree with. Right. Um, and then, of course, just join into a discussion right. with very little or minimal effort involved, you know, whereas someone like you who spends hours researching and putting the right. videos together, all of a sudden have to deal with people who basically take about two seconds to think about what they're going to say and a few seconds longer to type out, and somehow you're on equal footing. No. Yeah. That's... Bullshit. It's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, completely, it's completely comparing apples to oranges. You know, yeah. the, 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 the fact that these people are given this venue to then kind of destroy. It's always easier to tear something down than it is to, to build, build it up. It's up. easier to throw a stick of dynamite exactly. than to actually build a sustained exactly. shower. Exactly. Yeah, right. Exactly. So that's how I feel about so that. So when you, when you say this, right, when it, what a sadness it is that 99.99% of anything you find on Twitter, on, on uh, Facebook, Facebook, all these different venues is that. Right. And then it's reinforced by the so-called apologists that you find right. uh, you on know, uh, other on, on popular media. Right? right. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, and, 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 and there's there. I have no problems with people who are also taking the time. Sure. To, to pu- it, it, it present something that they they firmly believe. Of course. That believe of course. Them. Right. But but. Dismissal. These, and these people, these people are reinforcing in a way. Yes. This cadre uh, ever-growing numbers uh, uh, who want to just basically destroy everything in their wake. But I, I, I personally think that these apologists probably are more nuanced than the people yeah. that they're appealing to. Right. But the problem is the people they're appealing to don't appreciate the nuance or can even see the nuance yeah. in the people that they cite, that they claim to yeah. be authorities. Yeah. Because, you know, I think that these people are are you know, far removed from anything that we would consider to be mainstream. These are people who are, in a technical sense, sectarian. Yeah, which is the real opposite of Catholicism. Uh, Which is the opposite of... Catholic in a small small C sense. Catholic in a small C sense, right? Which is is universal. Right. Which is... And diverse. diverse. Unity within diversity. Right. Diversity within unity. Right. So yes, you know that's it's uh, unfortunately. And unfortunately, it's a why, I, why I appreciate what the, the 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 work these apologists put in. Yeah, they're being exploited by people who who don't care for yeah. nuance. I think that's very generous on your part. I I, I agree with you. Mm-hmm. I agree with you. I think that there is also. That's a big tent apologist. Oh yeah, they're 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 you know, and that changes through history. Yeah. Like we're, if we're talking about apologists in the classical sense, like uh, C.S. Lewis, Peter, the author, oh, oh. Of, right, who says you know be always ready to give a defense, right, 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 right. right. apologia and all that right. is one thing. But if you're talking about really people since polemical post Reformation times, mm-hmm. it becomes a exercise. 
how to prove my tradition how to prove is the my only tradition, real valid one. Uh, how to prove I'm right and you're wrong. That's yeah. that's what it becomes. That's what it becomes. And now you, it's it's you know again you know I, I I think of someone who by the way has 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 I've I've tried to establish communications with him. His staff has basically kind of rebuffed me, even though I've been very polite. But despite despite what I think is some personal disrespect at a professional level shown to me by someone like the person I'm thinking of, Dr. David Anders, I respect him as someone who is nuanced, right? Yeah. He's a former Protestant. He, he has a great deal of respect for his heritage. Uh, so even though I even though I think I have been personally and professionally disrespected by him and his staff, I will cut him enough slack, slack. to say to say that I respect him. Right. I respect him, especially when he's talking about the, the issues of his academic expertise, which is the Reformation. But the people who who listen to him, if you go by the comments on his call to communion uh, site on the right. WTN, you know, by the way, I was I was put on timeout. Really? On that you? site because I because someone called with an explicitly political question. And I said, is this the purpose of this site? And because, you know, of that, I was literally put on timeout. Right. I was also chastised one time for pointing out that in Catholic theology, the Eucharist is simultaneously supper, symbol, sign, sacrament, and sacrifice. Those five points, which is very true. And, 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 yet I was, and yet I was rebuked for that. Yeah. So, so my point is, that I, there's, I have no love loss. For call to communion, sure, or David Andrews, sure. But nonetheless, I'll overlook that to point to the fact that I I respect him as someone who knows a great deal about the Reformation. You're tremendous, but, the, generous, but really. the people, but the people, but the people who comment on that, side, right, right, unless they're Protestant, unless they're evangelical trolls, or Catholic to, trolls, or Catholic trolls, yeah, are clearly are clearly people who are just listening to him to have their biases confirmed. Right. That is sadly the truth for a lot of people. A lot of Catholics will go to Scott Hahn precisely for his biography, uh, Rome Sweet Home. Right. They will avoid all of his other exegetical works because, exactly as you say, that confirms they're in the best boat, they're the real authentic Christians, the, their child who they've disowned, or their relative who they no longer speak with, or their boss at work, or their friend, or not friend, but person, mm -hmm. adversary in conversation, is wrong, dead wrong for becoming an evangelical. Yeah. They're in the right, they're in the truth. And, yeah. and, and of course none of get, them work. They've and done, of course you get it on the other side as well. Would you, you know? call that intellectually dishonest? Absolutely. I Absolutely. I, I, I call it whenever it happens on either side. Yeah. It's intellectually dishonest because what you're trying to eventually do is convince yourself that I, I made the right choice, whether Correct. it was to leave Catholicism for or, evangelicalism or vice versa. Or joy. Right. Okay? You're trying to you're trying to convince yourself that this is something um that I'm right about. Right. Not just convicted about, but that I'm right about yes. in a metaphysically certain way. Right. This, this is not this is not a matter of, of conscience. Yeah. This is not a matter of transformation. Of, of transformation. Right. This is not a all matter the things of Jesus, inclination. All the things the gospel is about. Right, right. No, no. Right. This is a matter of metaphysical certitude. Yes. And when apologetics then becomes a, that. Yes. As opposed to an honest, this is why I decided to convert and it's not strictly about the right. mind. Then it's dishonest. Yes. Because you're not engaging the whole person. Right. You're not even engaging the, all the motivations that led you from one communion to another. Correct. You're just trying to basically say, look, because of this historical fact or this verse that I interpret this way or, you know, I'm right. This proof. I'm right. Yeah. And everybody else is it's wrong. wrong. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's not even intellectually honest to the person. Right. By the way, it's more than just intellectual honesty. It's spiritual honesty. Or dishonesty, you know, right? Spiritual right, dishonesty, right? It's, right, it's, right. It, you know, if you're, but you cannot be intellectually honest and spiritually dishonest. Of course, it can't happen. You can't be that. Yeah, you can't be that. So you would say that, and we've talked about this. We 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 agree that there is a difference, right, between a silly believer and a serious believer. Absolutely, both are believers. Just one is informed, and the other one is. Uh, 
someone who doesn't really want to be challenged by information. And the same thing is translatable to atheists. Atheists. And agnostics. Every, 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 there are every, silly agnostics there and are atheists. Silly, there are, look, there are silly. And there are serious ones. There are silly conservatives. Yes. Ideologically, there are silly liberals ideologically. Right.